Welcome back here to Mighty Mac on YouTube. Once again, if you guys like the content that we provide here, then be sure to subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the upcoming action within the NA Train Mission Foods Drag Racing Series. We have a lot to look forward to within the coming weeks as we get set to cover the 47th annual Night Under Fire from Norwalk, Ohio live at that event, as well as the Lucas Oil NA Train Nationals in Brainerd, Minnesota. All that is going to lead up to the end of the regular season at NA Train's crown jewel race the 70th edition of the u.s nationals if you enjoy the drag racing coverage if you want to know what's going on within the drag racing world then be sure to subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the upcoming action we have a lot of cool announcements that we're going to be uh releasing here in the coming weeks we're just waiting for the final things to be finalized on that so if you want to know what cool things we got going on as well as the updates within the drag racing world then subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the action without further ado Let's get into the video. So the big unknown within the NHRA world for the past two months or so is the status of the flagship NHRA car, that being the peak Chevrolet Camaro of NHRA icon and 16-time funny car champion John Forrest. If you've been somehow living under a rock since June, then you'll have missed the world-shocking motorsports news of John Forrest's incident back at the Virginia Nationals at Virginia Motorsports Park. That car has not seen the racetrack since that event competitively. It was at Norwalk as kind of a showpiece car. They had a tribute run down the track where they towed it behind a tow vehicle during the Sealmaster track walk. That was the last time that we really got to see that car in action. That wait is now going to end come this weekend. I have teased for the past couple weeks who the driver of the Peak Fuel Funny Car is. I was alerted to this about back right before Seattle about a driver being at a test session when JFR was then confirmed by a closer source that he wasn't driving at the test but was at the test and then from there on every single confirmation for me got sent to me and now today that news has been made publicly official the driver that will be filling in for the peak fuel funny car Chevrolet Camaro for John Forrest Racing will be none other than the former funny car champion himself Fast Jack Beckman he will be making his return to the seat of a nitro funny car at this weekend's night under fire in Norwalk Ohio that run is going to be used as kind of a warm up session to get Jack ready for his return to competitive NHRA racing at the Luke Lucas Oil Nationals in Brainerd, Minnesota. Also, from what I understand, it's going to be used as a bit of a license refresher as well, so that way Jack is able to run at, Nor at Brainerd, but I don't think that's going to be much of an issue at all. This is a huge deal within the drag racing world, not only for the fact that Jack Beckman is going to be making his return to a Feel Funny car for the first time since 2020, but also the possibility now of John Force winning his 17th Fuel Funny Car World Championship and possibly his last as well. There's been... A ton of speculation on what the condition is going to be of John Force, what the future of the team is. What we can focus on right now is that the wait to see the peak funny car back on the starting line is over. And for one of the top classes in the, in the series so far this season, this is going to be a big game changer. Because now that fifth, the big five that we've been talking about, big four, almost big five between Prague, Tasca, Hagen, Caps, and GR Todd now might have a return of Jack Beckman and along with it. So this is going to make this Fuel Funny Car Championship battle even more interesting as the great equalizer being the points reset means that if Jack Beckman can keep in the top 10 in points, then he will have a shot to win another Funny Car World Championship. This story was broken on NHRA.com. I will again post the link to the article down below. Please go read it. Give NHRA the credit they deserve for the incredible work they do in covering the sport for themselves as well the NHRA National Dragster staff. I'll read two of the quotes that were given in that article and then we can speculate further on what this could mean for the Funny Car Championship points battle. Robert High had to say, when you think about someone who can handle the driving, can deal with the media, take care of the sponsors, and take care of the fans, there was only one obvious choice and that was Jack Beckman, Hyde said. Plus, he has a history with Chris Cunningham, co-crew chief on the peak Chevy with Dan Hood and Tim Fabrizi, and has the respect of John's family. For Jack Beckman, he said, It's been nearly four years since I stood on the throttle, and I thought that feeling was something I never experienced again. Though the circumstances that brought me back are regrettable, the opportunity presented to me is beyond my ability to find words. I'm not replacing John. 
Nobody could ever do that. John is one of a kind, and his impact on the sport in my life cannot be cannot be overemphasized. I know how fortunate I am to have been picked to fill in for John, and I should be easy to spot in the pits. I'll be the guy who can't stop smiling. Now, if you're unaware of how this works, you might be asking, wait, how can John Force win a Funny Car World Championship when Jack Beckman is driving? There is a rule within the nature that states, if a driver is unable to compete, the team may add a substitute driver. That driver may be able to add to compete for points on behalf of the original driver for up to eight races. With the countdown, with the points reset, and with how that car is competed, John Force Racing, because of where everything was at, decided to park the car for Norwalk, Seattle, and Sonoma. That then allowed them to compete in the final eight races of the season, including the possibility of fighting for a Funny Car World Championship. Leaving Sonoma, that car currently sits six in the fuel Funny Car standings because of the fact that they're not, they have not competed in a qualifying round or try to qualify for a national event in the last three races their automatic lock into the countdown is gone now the task is on Jack Beckman to try and keep that car in the top 10 in points with where they're at six in the points and only two races remaining I don't think that's going to be too hard unless you just have nightmare weekend scenarios for that team but with how with how they have competed with how they have run and how good we all know Jack Beckman is I don't think that's going to be an issue whatsoever. I think they'll be safe to make the countdown for the championship. And then the fight is on for him to have the possibility to go out there and win his second in John 17th. Now, there's also a bit of speculation on what that can mean. Is, does Jack get credited for the championship or is it just John Force? I still say if Jack's in the car and wins the championship, then we go any 500 rules and we have two phases on the Borg Warner. One for the original driver, one for the relief driver. Um, so, again, this when you think about everything that's going on with this news... A big question that came out when this was theorized is who could replace John Force? And that a, was a really hard question for a lot of people to even try and answer. Because what we see, you know, in pro stock, you have a ton of drivers entering the sport, either from the pro mod ranks, either from Mountain Motor Pro Stock, or either from even the pro stock motorcycle ranks with, with Corey Reed and Joey Gladstone. With Top Fuel, you have guys like Cody Crone and Julian Atas waiting in the wings to get put behind the wheel of one of the top teams in the sport. In Funny Car, it's a bit of a different story. There's not really a lot of drivers that I would say are waiting in the wings to get behind the wheel of a Fuel Funny Car. There are people within the alcohol ranks that could get in there, but when you're talking about the level of prestige that you have with driving the Peak Fuel Funny Car, that becomes a whole nother story because now you have to find somebody that is able to fill in those shoes and be able to fill in the role of John Force to continue driving that car at the level that is expected to run. So that already narrows down a already short list to even shorter to just a couple handful of names. Guys like Jack Beckman's name was thrown into the ring. Other drivers thrown out there were Tony Pedregon as well as Tommy Johnson Jr., who has been open about getting back in a fuel funny car. Then there was Jordan Vandergriff, somebody that I speculated was going to replace John Forrest back at April. That ended up not being true. I heard a little bit of what's going on over there. John Forrest did say publicly that Jordan Vandergriff was planned to be driving a second top fuel dragster, but that was back at Bristol. And for whatever reason, Jordan decided not to get in the car here. I know, and all respect to him. He does a great job with Fox Sports. But for Jack Beckman, best case scenario in terms of replacement driver, a guy who is used to driving elite equipment after driving for Don Schumacher for most of his career, winning 33 national events as well as a 2012 Funny Car World Championship, nobody else really is set to get back in the car. He's only been gone for four years. That may sound like a long time. To him, it may be a long time. But in the grand scheme of things, with how long Funny Car has been around, it's been of a brief vacation, but a welcome back for a guy who... I'm going to be straight honest, did not know he was an elevator technician for the past four years. He went back to being a full-time elevator technician at the, after his somewhat career ended in 2020 and when Don Schumacher was downsizing their teams. Now he gets to come back and compete again in elite equipment, and I think that is going to be not only an exciting thing to watch, but a huge unknown to see where he's going to slot in with this ever so competitive fuel funny car class. That is going to wrap the video here. We will be live in Norwalk for Night Under Fire. We'll be having exclusive coverage of that event here on the channel. 
we're going to be having some really cool videos to bring out with you for the next coming weeks, not only from Nine Under Fire, but the Lucas Oil NHRA Nationals in Brainerd and the 70th edition of the U.S. Nationals. And between those three races, there is a really, really cool announcement that I'm excited to bring out to you guys. So if you want to keep up to date with what's going on, then subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the upcoming content that we provide. We're going to be covering not only the NHRA, but in a couple months, we're going to be covering not just NHRA, but the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and the GT World Challenge as they're going to be coming to Indianapolis for their annual races. And that is always a lot of fun. So if you want to see some sports cars as well as some jacksters, be sure to subscribe to the channel today so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Be also be sure to follow me on the social media pages down below, MoneyMac03 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We are providing updates throughout this entire storyline. And finally, until Nine Under Fire, this has been Mighty Mac. We will see you next time.